everybody this is Tracy here for another edition of a view from Tracy's point and we are here to recap invite only Cabo season 1 episode 5 and this episode was titled dirty little secret <laughs> so okay it happened so fast that we had to like catch our breath blink a couple of times to make sure we were seeing what we were seeing so do you guys remember that actress AJ Johnson? Uh, she played the mother of Tyrese in the movie Baby Boy. Well, I guess she isn't an actress anymore. She's like a bodybuilder and a life coach or something. But let me tell you, she was a surprise guest that Larry uh, brought back to the house when he came back. Because remember in the last episode, he had to go on a uh, business trip. And then he called and said that when he came back, he had a friend that was going to be with him. Well, that friend was AJ. And what I tell you guys, AJ came in the house on 100. <laughs> it was just like, caught us totally off guard. So evidently, AJ and Emily have some kind of beef between the two of them that has gone on for a long time. So they are friends of Larry's from like way back, I guess. So Emily was not happy to see AJ come up in that house. And then Bianca, she was just relieved because remember Malaku and Agu, not Malaku and Agu, it was Malaku and Jermaine. And Agu might have been there, but anyway, they filled her in about Larry saying that there was another person in his life that he may or may not be in love with and nobody seemed to care. So, you know, Bianca was in her feelings about that. So when she found out that it was AJ that had came with him, you know, she breathed a sigh of relief. So then they were going to go out to dinner and AJ wanted to take a whole bath. You know, if you're not familiar with the whole bath, a whole bath is when you just go in the bathroom and you get a rag, soap it up and wash your private parts at the sink. So when AJ goes upstairs, she happens to go into the bathroom that Emily, you know, that's attached to Emily's bedroom and so there was only one towel left and AJ took the towel and then started wiping her face and stuff which really pissed Emily off because she was like you should have asked for that towel that was the last clean towel in the house and you know we have been getting good cleaning service so I don't know when we're going to get another clean towel so she's all in her feelings about this doggone towel so they all end up getting dressed and going downstairs and and then AJ brings up the fact that Emily and Agu had hooked up. So she says to Agu, you know, that he's got to um, do better than that, you know, in choosing his jump offs that you can't just be hooking up with anybody. So all of a sudden, all hell broke out and AJ <laughs> just went for Emily's jugular. Like if she had a knife, she would have stabbed Emily in the jugular with that and let her bleed to death. And everybody was just like, what the hell is going on? And I'm thinking like, poor Emily, you know, she didn't deserve that. You know, she gets on our nerves and she's kind of flaky and everything, but she didn't deserve to be treated like that. And then I'm like, why in the world did Larry tell AJ about all the drama that had went on and about you know what happened between Agu and Emily when he knew that the two of them didn't get along and didn't like each other. So AJ is just going in on Emily and then Malaku finally steps up you know he be, he's the man of the hour so he steps up and he's telling AJ that she really needs to chill out you know she's supposed to be a life coach but she's not acting like she's a life coach and then AJ is like well in this moment I'm not being a life coach I'm being a friend and my conversation was to you know my comments were directed at a goose so I don't know why Emily is jumping into it and then of course Emily is like you're talking about me like I'm not even standing here and it's none of your business and then Emily starts talking about the towel and that's why she was upset and I'm like child please so they finally bring it back bring it back down and they end up going out to dinner so they end up going out to dinner and then Larry pulls AJ aside you know and talking to her about you know the way she acted at the house and you know she shouldn't have done that
So then AJ comes in and sits at the table and then he gets Emily and then Emily is like, you know, that was so out of order. It was so uncool. You know, why did that even have to happen? Why did you bring her back to the house? And so while they're talking, AJ takes the moment to apologize to everybody at the table for the way she acted and for bringing negative, negative energy into the house. And so then Emily comes back to the table and then Kamani, you know, she asks a question and I'm just like, at this point, let it die. You know, Emily says she didn't want to talk about it anymore. So just let it die down. Let it be what it is so they can move on. And so instead of AJ like pulling Emily aside, you know, and apologizing to her for her behavior, you know, she kind of you know, tried to mix her apology into the conversation that they were having, but Emily said she was done and she didn't want to talk about it anymore. So then Emily goes to the bathroom and Bianca went to the bathroom. So then they end up in the bathroom together and Emily called Bianca a traitor. You know what I'm saying? She didn't want to go to the bathroom with the traitor. So basically Emily is upset because she felt that Bianca, you know, should have stepped in and, you know, said something and defended, defended her, but Bianca didn't say anything. So then, you know, it was just two, um, two tents at the dinner table. So then Larry said, okay, well, let's go dancing. So they go to the club, you know, kind of relax and have drinks and everything. And then Emily, for some reason, takes a goose um, hat off his head and goes off, the, goes out to the dance floor and starts dancing with Larry. So then Kamani, you know, she gets in her feelings and she's like, why did you let her take your hat? And Agu is sitting there, you know, because he's the peacemaker. <laughs> he ain't, you know, trying to be arguing and being mad at anybody. So Kamani, you know, she's like, you should have checked her. You keep letting her get away, you know, with doing all kinds of things to, you know, like, you know, it's no big deal when she knows, you know, what's going on. And I kind of feel Kamani in this situation because even though Emily really doesn't realize what she's doing, you know, she's just being playful and being herself. But she is kind of disrespecting the fact that now Agu is trying to talk to Kamani and she shouldn't have took the hat. But then on the other hand, uh, Kamani, if you got to keep telling Agu how to be a man in this situation, he might not be the man for you. So then the following day, you know, Bianca apologizes to Emily, but she doesn't understand, you know, that the reason Emily wanted her to say something to AJ is because they have known each other for a long time and she just wanted um, Bianca to tell AJ that she was out of line and that she needed to chill out, you know, with the way she was treating Emily, but Bianca didn't seem to really get that. So AJ comes out and offered to make protein shakes because Emily, Bianca, and Larry, they were out laying by the pool. So then Larry gets up to go inside with um, AJ and Emily, you know, she's getting up and she's like, that alpha must be crazy. She think I'm getting ready to drink anything that she makes. So after that little thing, um, AJ leaves. She changes her clothes, calls her a cab. So she basically came to Cabo for like 12 hours just to wreak havoc and chaos, chaos at the house. And then she gets um, back on the plane and heads on back to where she came from. And I'm just like... That was so stupid. That was about as crazy as the little beef they trying to get going on Real Housewives of Potomac, which I just finished recapping. So now that peace and order has been restored to the house that um, Miss AJ is gone. So Malaku and Jermaine, you know, they're reading. Then we find out that Malaku and Jermaine went to the barbershop with Aku a couple of days earlier. And somehow they got his phone and was reading his text messages. And so Emily has been sending text messages to a goo, you know, I guess trying to hook back up with him. But they were talking about, you know, when are you going to work me out? And because I guess a goo is a model and a personal trainer or something. So then we have a scene where, you know, he's... Um, helping Emily with some workout moves or something. But I'm thinking of goo, leave Emily alone. If you are serious about getting with Kamani, you got to cut off all contact with Emily. Tell her not to be texting you, that you can't work out with her. Don't be taking your hat at the club. Just leave you alone. And then we already know that Jermaine is convinced that before this trip is over with that a goo and um, Miss Emily are going to have sex. He is just... He's ready to put some money on it. He's so determined that that's what's about to happen. 
So later on that evening at dinner, the group uh, get into a discussion about Larry inviting AJ. And so Larry, you know, he's trying to feign innocence, but they all felt that, you know, he should have dragged AJ out the house once she went left and let her know that she was out of order and wrong for talking to Emily that way. But Larry, you know, he's trying to clown Jermaine, you know, like Jermaine is irrelevant and his opinion doesn't matter because Jermaine was saying like, if it was me and then Larry was like, well, it wasn't you and in my position and with my stature. And I'm just like, okay, let me find out Larry's that friend. So, you know, Jermaine was like, you know, I understand all that. That's why when the drama was going down, I sat in that chair and folded my arms like this and just watched it happen. He says, well, I'm just saying to you, if it were me, if if I was in your shoes, I would not have let that go down. So I'm glad Jermaine stood his ground, but I'm just kind of starting to feel some kind of way about Larry and his little attitude and that he thinks he's above his friends and that he can treat them any kind of way that he wants to. So then Larry goes to bed, but everybody else go out to the pool and then a goo for whatever reason <laughs> gets in the pool. And so he's playing, I'm trying to think, was that the scene where Emily was on the, um, I think he helped Emily get on a float, like a swan, a big pink swan or something. And so he pushes her out and she's playing around. The next thing we know, he's on a float and he takes off his swimming trunks and they just cover up his penis. And so Kamani was so turned off, she just got up and walked over to the little sofa area and Bianca went with her. And, you know, she's basically saying like, we all know you got a big penis and you ain't got to show it to us all the time. And I'm just thinking, wrong move, Agu. Wrong move once again. But maybe Agu is just childish like that. Like maybe he's attracting women, you know, with the sex. And that's all he's accustomed to and that's all he knows how to do. But wrong move, Agu. So then the following day, it was um, Day of the Day a celebration, and that's like a Mexican celebration, you know, where they um, celebrate their deceased loved ones, and they have like parties and festivals and all type of things. So the group is going to a party that was at a museum, and there was like an art show or something that they were going to attend. So uh, Kamani wants um, to get to know Agu on a mature level. So once again, she gives them a chance. So the two of them kind of go off on their own to tour the museum. And she asked Agu how old did he think she was when they first uh, met. And he said he thought she was in her 30s. And he was like, good job. She was like, good job. So I'm thinking, dang, is Kamani like 40-something? <laughs> like, how old are all these people on this show? So they seemed to be having a good night and everything, you know, was going good. And then Bianca uh, confides in Emily that she's hurt about learning that Larry has someone else that she knew nothing about, you know, so Emily's trying to console her with that and then Larry calls Malaku and um, Jermaine to the side to let them know that you know it's Emily's birthday and that he had invited Joseph to come out and have um, dinner with them on the night of Emily's birthday but he had no idea when he made those arrangements that um, Agu and Emily were going to hook up but he says that he doesn't want anybody to mention the whole Agu Emily situation while Joseph is there. So I am so sick of seeing Emily naked in bed because you know the camera for whatever reason always goes to her getting up out the bed and she like is ass butt naked like no clothes on boobs flying, butt flapping all the way. And I'm like, you're sharing a room with somebody else. And Kamani already said that she was sick of seeing Emily naked behind. So you would think she would show a little respect and put a nightshirt or something on. But I guess her and Agu have that much in common. They like walking around naked. So the following day, the crew go um, swinging off a cliff. And it's like where you go up on top of a mountain or something. And then you get in those um, chairs and they drop you. And you swing out, you know, over this um, ravine or something. So everybody did it except for Kamani and I think Bianca and Bianca and Agu went together. Larry and Emily went together. So maybe I don't know if Jermaine and Malaku went. If they did, they went together. So. 
Kamani didn't go. She said, thank God, you know, she had that accident. So that was going to keep her from going because she wasn't trying to do nothing crazy like that. So they all seem to, you know, have had a good um, time with that. And so when they return, Joseph is there and Emily is happy and scared at the same time. And the camera kept going to a goo and he's looking stressed out. So I don't know if he was stressed out because he was jealous to see Emily's man if he was stressed out because he didn't know if somebody was going to tell about the little hookup or what was going on or if it was just male testosterone going on and he was like, you know, what you doing here because I've been um, stringing her along this whole trip. So then a goo tells, um, I think he was in the car with Kamani and um, two of the other guys and he was saying that, you know, he just couldn't be fake and he felt like he needed to say something. So they arrive at dinner and Bianca, you know, wants to ask uh, Joseph, you know, what does he find so special about Emily? And so Joseph says that um, he likes her because she's the real deal. You know, she's so real. So while he was talking, a goose starts choking on whatever he was eating. And then the two of them, you know, they say something. And I think they agreed that they were going to go take a shot and smoke a cigar or something. I, I missed that part of the conversation. So they go outside and then Emily's freaking out like, oh my God. And then Larry decides that he's going to go out and see what they're talking about. And then Emily got up and I swear Emily fell or tripped or something. <laughs> and so the show kind of went off with her trying to compose herself. But then the scenes from next week, Look like it is going to be a good episode. So I can't wait. So guys, let me know what you think about the show, what you thought about this episode. Leave your comments below, rate the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until next time, I hope everyone has a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.